Good afternoon, guys. Maritza here again. I just came back from church and breakfast. What a blessing. I'm going to miss my church family. They've been such a blessing to me. Pastor Joseph and all the brothers and sisters there that have made me feel so welcome, you know. Next week, I'm, I'm going to be baptized. And although I've been baptized before, I fell back into sin. I've never actually been baptized as legally Maritza as the woman that I am. So that's going to be that's going to be an amazing experience and to be baptized by Pastor Joseph who has been an amazing mentor toward me. He has you know even though I was I was difficult in the beginning I challenge him and make fun of what he was saying. And I did all sorts of stuff, you know, that was still the demon inside of me that was fighting. But once I surrendered completely, I see the blessing. I see the blessing in that church. It's such a beautiful, wonderful family. I wanted to touch base on some of the stuff that I learned today, which is, you know, God, every week is just such a blessing. But last week was very touching and I shared it on, on my blog and on my Facebook, but today I want to talk about what he taught us at church. And there's this packet I received from the Calvary Chapel, and there's a lot of really good information in there. I just made the screen go <laughs> dark because I put the paper right in front of the camera. But anyway, steps to peace with God. You know, we find that we live in a world that is so not peaceful. Everything is ruckus and everyone's anxious and depressed and, and they're all worried about how they're going to make ends meet and, and all sorts of different things. People constantly engaging in sin. People gossiping, lying, doing the things that they do. It's, it's what we've been taught. Defensive, arguments, hatred, fear. I choose not to live that way anymore. I choose to live and become the body of Christ allow the Holy Spirit to reign in my heart. It's important for us to show the world the truth about Father. It's important to show the world how they are living. We would be bad Christians if we didn't do so, if we just continue to allow them to live in sin. That is not what Father wants. He wants us to expose evil. He wants us to try to save as many souls as possible Kid yourself not. The end is here. This is a rescue mission. We're not going to change things around. We're not going to change the world around. It's too late for that. What we need to do now is try to save as many souls as possible. My channel is meant for those that want to listen to the good news, to listen to the gospel, to listen to the truth. If that doesn't resonate with you, then I ask you to please turn off the channel, go elsewhere. If you're here to want to listen to gossip and argument and stuff, this is not the place for you. I'm here to expose truth about the LGBT. I'm not here to hurt anyone. Truth will set you free. And I know you don't understand that now because you are living in that turmoil. You're being deceived as I was deceived for the past 38 years. So this little pamphlet here is very interesting. Um, it goes into little steps, you know, step one, God's purpose, peace and eternal life. That's his purpose. He wants you to have peace and he wants you to have eternal life with him. God loves you and he wants you to live in peace with him and to receive eternal life. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's in Roman 5.1. There's a lot of really good Roman scripture that I'm going to be reading to you today. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And that's in John 3.16. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23. Since God planned for us to be at peace with him and to have eternal life, why are many people not enjoying this experience? What's going on? Why are we not at peace? 
Why are we always in turmoil, always arguing, always gossiping, always fighting, always making up all sorts of stuff, right? Well, step two, our problem, sin and separation. You see, we love sin a lot more than we love peace and eternal life. Well, it appears so anyway, right? So God did not make us robots to mindlessly love and obey him. Instead, he gave us a will and freedom of choice. That's where free will comes along. He wants you to come to him willingly. He doesn't want to force you to do something that you don't want to do. As a matter of fact, if he sees that you're continuing to sin, he's just going to give you a reprimand mind and he's just going to, you know, he's going to say, I never knew you. But like Adam, we know what Adam did. We often choose to disobey God and go our own selfish ways. Genesis chapter 2, 3 explains that, but this side of our nature is called sin and it separates us from God. That rebellious nature, that need to want to do what we want to do because it feels good in our meat suit. And then we want everybody to agree with us and we want everybody to cheer us on, you know, but the Bible says for all have sinned, every single one of us, I've sinned. I've seen so much that I've got a, a pile, you know, that's, yeah, lots of sins, right? We all fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Not pretty. Eternal damnation. And that's in Romans 3, 2, 23 and 6, 23. So after Adam sinned, the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. He didn't deserve to be there anymore. See, when we are, it's like your parent. You do something wrong when you're a kid, you get punished. Parents don't go, oh, yippee, we got to love you the way you, yes, yippee, yippee, keep, keep doing bad things, you know? No, they love you, so they punish you. They try to help you grow, evolve, be responsible, not hateful. They try to teach you not to be liars. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you. And that's what happens, you know. You start to sin, you start to do what you do. God just he stops listening. He never knows you, you know. I never knew you. Jesus Christ is the only answer to this problem of separation from God. He died on the cross and rose from the grave to pay the penalty for our sins, completely bridging the cap, the gap between us and God. Like I've mentioned before, the bridge was broken. Jesus came, died for our sins, bridge was repaired. We now have the ability to get to God. God has provided us with the only way, and we must make a choice. So, the Bible says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. That's Acts 4.12, and the other one is Romans 5.8. For there is one God, one mediator between God and man, or mankind, and man, the man Christ Jesus. That's the only mediator. That's it. There's nobody else. There's only one God, too. I mean, they try to, you know, they try to paint all these different little G's and big G's and middle G's and all sorts of G's. No, there's one God. Satan is trying to confuse you. Very truly, I tell you, whoever bears my word, Jesus, and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. So. Step number four, our response, receive Christ. We can receive Jesus Christ when we believe in his message and trust in him alone to save us. It's the only salvation. Without Jesus Christ, there's no salvation. You can't pray to Buddha. You can't pray to whatever. And, and No, no, it's through Jesus. And I know many of you get offended because it, you know, the thing that Christians think they have the only way, the only answer. Trust me when I say it is the way. And I know you don't trust me, but or some of you don't, but... It's okay. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And that's John 14, 1. So, 
The Bible says, all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him, Jesus Christ, receives forgiveness of sins through his name. So all the stuff that you've done before, you will be forgiven. You will be forgiven if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So it's like we're adopted. We become adopted to this beautiful family, this body of Christ. So how do you do this, right? Well, number one, admit you need a savior. Admit you're a sinner. Be willing to turn from your sins. Repent. See, that's where people, that's, that's where people go, oh, uh, uh, no, right? That's where people kind of like stumble and, and they're like, they think I just have to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I'm good. But that's not how it works. I hate to break the news to you. That's not how it works. You have to be willing to turn from your sins. You will be forgiven. No matter what you did, your past is your past. You've been a murderer. You could have had an abortion. You could have done all sorts of terrible things in your past. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all that is clean. You're cleansed. You're good to go. You're a new creation. You get a new mind, a new heart. But you have to be willing to turn away from your sins and you have to repent. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on that cross and rose from the grave. Through prayer, invite Jesus Christ to come in and control your life through the Holy Spirit. Receive him as your Savior. See, that's what happens. See, once you really mean business, and God knows your heart, when you really mean business, you get down on your knees and you repent and you accept him and you want nothing more in life but to be with him because you're so fed up with your past, with all the things that you have done, that he cleanses you, he gives you a new heart, the Holy Spirit enters you, and you no longer have the need or the want to sin. It may not be easy for everyone. A lot of people struggle. A lot of people struggle to give up their vices, their addictions, the things that they identify with. It's hard for some people. But when you get tired, and that's what happens, you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. You get tired of living in anxiety and depression and shame and guilt, all these things. You know, you get very tired of that. So what to pray, okay? So for all of you that are listening right now and you're really, you're like, man, I, I should do this. You know, I'm, I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of feeling guilt. My life is not as good as it should be. I never have any peace. I'm always arguing. I'm always seeing skeleton in the closets and shadows and I'm fighting with everyone. And everyone's, everyone's always out to get you and it's everybody else's fault. You're never taking a responsibility. You know, you're always trying to harm somebody but make it seem like it's them that's harming you. You know, you know who you are. You need to say this prayer right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am sinful and I need your forgiveness. I believe that you died to pay the penalty for my sin or sins, right? I want to turn from my sin nature and follow you instead. I invite you to come into my heart and my life. In Jesus' name, amen. It's as simple as that. You call him. You repent. If you are sincerely in praying this prayer and ask Jesus Christ to come into your life, do you know what he has given you? Do you realize what he has actually given you? There's a new life, a new you. It is amazing. It is amazing. I mean, it, it, <laughs> I can't even put it into words. You know, it is the most amazing feeling ever. And back in the day when I first accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I felt that amazing feeling. So when I had to go back into sin, it was horrible. It never felt right. I was always battling myself. And finally, God stepped in. God stepped in and, and pulled me away. 
I am forever grateful. I am happy. I'm going to get baptized. Although I, I was baptized in Fort Lauderdale in the ocean. It's going to be nothing more joyful than to be baptized by my pastor, Pastor Joseph, who him and his wife have been detrimental. The family at Silver City Calvary Chapel have been amazing. I can't thank them enough. I really can't. I love them so very much and I am going to miss them. But I know that I'll be traveling and I'll be back here again and visiting and who knows, who knows what the future holds. Um, but they'll always have a special place in my heart, a very special place in my heart. So what happens when you receive Jesus Christ, you are born into God's family. It's a beautiful family through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit who indwells every believer. This is called regeneration or new birth. You're born again. God blesses you as you begin your new life in Christ. It's amazing. I, I just, you know, I can't tell you enough the feeling, the wonders, the amazement, all that goes with it. I want to read you a little something here that the pastor shared today in today's sermon, Romans 6, 4 through 9. We were therefore buried with him through the baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. See, the whole concept was, and I took some notes, when he died, we died with him. When he rose, we arose with him. We became a new creation. That is why when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you really mean it, you start living like him. Sin is no longer part of your vocabulary. You no longer place your needs, your identity in front of you. On the contrary, you place him in front of you. You become like Christ, clean, righteous. You no longer can live in sin. Your veil has been removed. For those of you who don't see it, you still have that veil. You're still living a lie. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be ununited from him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified. That old Jew, that old person, the person who used to like to smoke, drink, watch porn, masturbate, engage in idolatry, engage in same-sex marriage, those that cheat on their wife, those that do pedophilia, those that do all those sorts of things like that. If you accept him as your Lord and Savior and you carry your cross and you become crucified, you die to your own needs, your own flesh. You actually know that your old self has been sacrificed or crucified with them so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. That's the whole concept. That's how that works. If you're still living in sin, you haven't died to your flesh. You have not fully accepted Jesus Christ and your Lord and Savior. You can't call yourself a Christian. You can't say that you believe in Christ when you are not doing or following his commandments. And the number one commandment I know is love God above all, and love your neighbors. So if you love God, you're gonna follow his commandments. If you love your neighbors, you're not gonna hurt them by gossiping, by, by hurting them in different ways. And we know, you know how you've hurt people. Because when you place yourself in front of anybody else, you are hurting people. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. That is something very beautiful, indeed very beautiful. So Romans 6, 15 through 21 was another very important part of today's sermon. Slaves to righteousness. So you're either going to be chained to God or chained to the devil. It's up to you. Who do you want to spend eternity with? Because you're eternal beings, whether you like it or not. Who do you want to be chained to? Who do you want to be a slave to? So Romans 6, 15 through 21 reads, What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? By no means. 
Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slave to sin, which leads to death, by the way, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness and eternal life with Father. But thanks to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your alliance. You have been set free from the sin and have become slaves to righteousness. And let me tell you, there's no better feeling than to be a slave to righteousness. I am a slave to righteousness. My past was dirty and ugly. And people are trying to continue to pull my past. My past doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter to God anymore because I am clean now. I've been redeemed. I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I live for him and for him alone. I am a slave to righteousness. 19 reads, I'm using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to every increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. You couldn't see, you're, you're so blind, you couldn't see what's right, all you knew is sin. You know who you're talking about, you know who I'm talking about, you, you, all of you, you know what I'm talking about here. What benefits did you reap at the time from the things you now ashamed of? Those things result in death. Not only do they result in death, let me get Galatians here, not only do they result in death, Shame, Galatians, and we're going to go to Galatians 6, 8. It's eternal. It's not like you're just going to go to jail for a little bit. No, it's eternal. Galatians 6, 8 reads, whoever souls to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Isn't that what you want? Because this little time here on this planet, it's just a hiccup. It's like, boop, and it's gone. But eternal life, that's some heavy stuff there. Some heavy stuff. And I'm gonna read that one more time. Whoever sows to please their flesh, that means everything to do with looks, vanity, sports cars, gadgets, and use technology. All the stuff that people plan to do to their bodies out of vanity. That's from the flesh. That's You're pleasing your flesh. You're not pleasing Father at all. And we're here to please our Father. We're here to be slaves. We're here to call Jesus Christ as my Lord. Not just your savior. No, 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 no. He is your Lord. He is your king. You are to bow down to him. You are to listen to him. You are to have his identity. He should be your everything. If, you're, if he's not, then you're sinning. If you're involved in your fleshy requirements and your needs, then you're sinning. So whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. It's all up to you. Seriously, all up to you. It's your choice. Anyways, that was beautiful. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to being baptized by Pastor Joseph. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. And yeah, you know, I don't care what those that are following their fleshy desires have to say about me. I don't care because the only one that matters to me knows my heart and knows exactly how I'm living and what I'm doing. I'm the daughter of the Most High. I will glorify my Father. I will scream it from the highest mountain, whatever it is, I will glorify my father. 
because he has done amazing works in me. And he could do amazing works in you too. All you have to do, step to peace, which I read to you. Get yourself a Bible. Start reading. Start praying. Start asking God to guide you, to allow the Holy Spirit to come inside of you so you can reap the rewards. I love you guys. I love you so very much. Every single one of you, my haters, the ones that think I've gone crazy. I'm crazy in love with God. If by being crazy means that I'm no longer part of this world, I no longer have the same desires that I had before. I have an amazing amount of peace in my heart. If that's crazy, then by all means, I'd rather be crazy like this than live the world that you all are living in. But I will continue to pray. You all will be in my prayer. Every single one of you, all of you that are lying about me, all of you that are doing what you're doing, I leave it all up to God. Because there is a verse in the Bible. I'm here. Still learning my Bible, and I love my Bible so much. And... Um, Don't mess with God's children. He called a little child to him and placed a child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Look at what's being done to our children today. We're definitely living in end's time. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person through whom they come. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off or throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than have to than have to two hands or two feet and be drowned in internal fire. And if your eyes causes you to stumble, gauge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter with one eye than to have to two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. So don't mess with God's children. Jesus, I like a good argument. I like to discuss different views of biblical interpretation. However, do I cause people to stumble? I hope not. I try and encourage people to follow hard after God and wrestle with issues. So those of you that are being so like PC, you're sending the ones you're being PC to hell and you're going right along with them. So let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. However, you were there, even though I couldn't sense you, you say harsh things to those who cause my peers to fall away from the faith. You're all being pulled away from the faith. I pray for mercy for them. I hope that those who are angry and hurting will find peace. I also pray that the bullying of, of, um, of individuals that are pulling you away from faith that are allowing you to do what you do ceases to happen. So, you know, do not mess with God's children. Do not mess. Let's see, there's another. I'm trying to find scripture here. So yes, I think this video has gone on way too long. Don't like to take more of your time. It's already 30 minutes. God bless you all. I love you dearly. I'll be on tomorrow morning. I have an amazing guest coming on Wednesday, looking for more and more guests. And just it's the whole concept is to help you awaken, is to help you realize that time is short. God loves you, but you must follow his commandments. You must sin no more. Take care, guys. I love you, but remember to love yourselves too. Bye-bye.